Hey there, I'm Mike Rignetta, and this is the first episode of Crash Course Theater. Welcome. In the episodes to come, we're gonna have it all. Tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, tragical comical, historical, pastoral, expialidocious. Yeah, I mean, this series could go on forever. And let me introduce you to Dionysus, the Greek god of theater and wine. I mean, they can't all be charming genius birdmen, I guess. In this series, we'll explore the history of theater and how we can understand and analyze it. We'll take a look at significant plays and performances along the way, but in this episode, we're gonna define theater and look at some theories about how it got started. So, prologue over, act one, scene one, begin. <laughs> First, let's define theater the building. A theater is a place in which a play is performed. If you trace the word back to its Greek origins, it literally means the seeing place. It can be big or small, indoors or outdoors, purpose-built or just borrowed. Sometimes plays are performed in spaces that aren't really theaters at all, in a park or a parking lot, on a sidewalk, or in a private home. Theater also refers to the performance of plays and to the body of literature and other documentation that has accompanied it. Some plays, known as closet dramas, aren't even written to be performed, and that's theater too. So are improvised plays that don't have a script, and plays that have a script but don't use words, like some of Samuel Beckett's shorts. A familiar definition is that theater requires requires at least one actor and at least one audience member. And that definitely covers a lot of stuff. But like, what's an actor? What's an audience member? While most plays use human actors, there are plays performed by robots and laptops with voice synthesizers. There are plays performed by animals and by puppets, though usually there's a human helping out with those. I hope. So is everything theater? If you want a really extensive definition, the composer John Cage said that theater takes place all the time, wherever one is, and art simply facilitates persuading one this is the case. So is this theater? Well, not for you. You're watching a video recorded earlier, but here in this room, I'm performing, right? And there's an audience, if you include Stan and Zuleya, watching me. Am I doing theater? Do you guys want to hear my to be or not to be? Yorick, do you want to? They say no every time. A plague on both your houses! What is and isn't theater is a kind of question that can make your head spin. We're gonna come back to it a couple times, especially when we talk about political theater and protest theater and immersive theater. But for now, we're gonna use a more narrow definition. Theater is a deliberate performance created by live actors and intended for a live audience typically making use of scripted language. We may meet some exceptions along the way, looking at you, robo-actors, but this will work for now. And before we get too far, let's confront the perennial controversy, should you spell theater with an R-E or an E-R? And the short answer is, both of them are fine. R-E is more common outside of the US, but for some folks, this spelling acts as a shibboleth. You may have heard someone say that a theater is a building, but the theater is an art. Or theater is a destination, but theater is a journey. Here at Crash Course, we don't mind either, but we've chosen to stick with ER for consistency. There's no origin story for theater that everyone agrees on, but there are some theories that we can explore. In the West, at least, up until the 6th or 7th century BCE, we didn't have theater as we know it today, but we did have religious ritual, which can get pretty theatrical. One of the most popular involved a procession from Eleutheria to Athens, where worshippers lofted a giant phallus and sang songs called dithyrams in praise of you know who. And one theory about those dithyrams actually is that eventually they evolved into theater, when singers started acting out the action instead of just singing it. Aristotle and his followers think that sooner or later a singer stepped out of the dithyram chorus and started acting out individual characters. This actor was called Thespis. Like actually, that was his name. And that's where we get the noun thespian. 
According to stories, Thespis learned to switch between characters, and to enhance the effect, he got the bright idea to use masks. This was Greek tragedy in its earliest form, one actor paired with a chorus. It still sounded a lot like a dithyram, or like a bard reciting portions of epics as banquet entertainment, but the direct impersonation of a song's characters made it different. And it continued to develop, adding actors and architectural elements for about 150 years. Tragedy, by the way, derives from the Greek words for goat and song, which may have had to do with animal sacrifices that were made during the festivals, or it may just be another reference to Saturn. 